Before the operation, anesthesia drugs were given to the child. These drugs helped the child to relax and fall asleep. The child slowly became calm and stopped feeling fear or pain. After this, a soft mask was placed on the child's face. Through this mask, oxygen was given to help proper breathing. The oxygen supported the lungs and maintained a safe oxygen level in the body. The doctors closely monitored breathing and heart rate. This process made sure the child remained safe, comfortable, and pain-free before surgery. The patient was positioned appropriately with the head and neck aligned to achieve optimal airway access. Pre-oxygenation was provided to ensure adequate oxygen reserves before the procedure. A laryngoscope was then introduced gently into the oral cavity to visualize the vocal cords clearly. Once a clear view of the glottis was obtained, an appropriately sized endotracheal tube was carefully passed through the vocal cords into the trachea under direct vision. After insertion, the laryngoscope was removed and correct placement of the endotracheal tube was confirmed by observing chest rise, auscultation of bilateral breath sounds, and capnography where available. Oxygenation and ventilation were ensured through the tube. The tube was then secured firmly using adhesive tape to prevent displacement. Throughout the procedure, vital signs were continuously monitored and the patient remained stable. Proper fixation of the tube ensured safe airway maintenance and effective ventilation during the procedure. After successful endotracheal intubation and secure fixation of the tube, anesthesia was confirmed to be adequate and the surgical procedure was commenced. The patient was positioned appropriately on the operating table and all standard aseptic precautions were strictly followed. The abdomen was cleaned thoroughly with antiseptic solution and draped in a sterile manner to maintain a sterile surgical field. A surgical incision was made carefully over the appropriate abdominal site. Layer by layer dissection was carried out with precision until the peritoneal cavity was entered. Upon exploration, the appendix was identified. The appendix was found to be inflamed, consistent with the preoperative diagnosis. With great surgical skill and careful handling of tissues, the surgeons gently mobilized the appendix while protecting the surrounding structures. The mesoappendix was carefully ligated and divided to control blood supply. After ensuring complete hemostasis, the base of the appendix was securely ligated. The appendix was then removed successfully without any complication. The appendicial stump was inspected thoroughly to ensure there was no bleeding or leakage. The operative field was irrigated with normal saline and meticulous hemostasis was achieved. After confirming that the surgical site was clean and dry, the abdominal layers were... After completion of the surgical procedure and closure of the wound, attention was directed towards sterile dressing and postoperative recovery. Once the skin was closed neatly, the surgical site was cleaned gently with antiseptic solution to remove any blood stains and to reduce the risk of infection. Strict aseptic technique was maintained throughout the dressing process. Sterile gauze pads were placed carefully over the incision site, ensuring complete coverage of the wound. These pads were applied without exerting excessive pressure, allowing proper absorption of any minimal postoperative discharge. A sterile adhesive dressing was then applied securely to hold the gauze in place and to protect the surgical wound from external contamination. The dressing was inspected to ensure that it was clean, dry, and properly positioned. The surrounding skin was also checked for any signs of irritation or bleeding. Proper sterile dressing played a vital role in promoting wound healing, preventing infection, and providing comfort to the patient. After the dressing was completed, the patient was gradually shifted toward the recovery phase. Anesthesia was reversed slowly and carefully according to standard protocols. The patient's airway reflexes, spontaneous breathing, and level of consciousness were closely monitored. Once the patient demonstrated adequate respiratory effort and protective reflexes, extubation was performed safely. The patient was then transferred to the recovery room under close supervision. In pain management was initiated as per postoperative orders to ensure patient comfort. The surgical dressing was regularly inspected for soakage or bleeding. Any abnormal findings were promptly addressed. 
fluid balance was maintained, and intravenous fluids were continued as prescribed. The patient's level of consciousness gradually improved as the effects of anesthesia wore off. Special attention was given to maintaining patient warmth and comfort during recovery. The patient was reassured and positioned comfortably to avoid strain on the surgical site. Once fully awake and stable, the patient was assessed for movement, sensation, and overall well-being. After meeting the recovery criteria, including stable vital signs, adequate pain control, and satisfactory wound condition, the patient was prepared for transfer to the ward for further postoperative care. Instructions regarding wound care, activity limitation, and monitoring for signs of infection were noted for continued management. The sterile dressing and 